Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Monday, March 20th, 2017 edition of VR News. Normally wouldn't mention it, guys, but if I uh, seem not as enthusiastic as I normally do, it's just my energy levels are crap, I've got some kind of bug. My family has quarantined me to um, the man cave, and uh, yeah, I could think of worse places to be, so that's not that bad, but the energy levels are... So there you go, that's why, but that's not an excuse. Virtual reality news marches ever onward. It's no different on this daily VR news show. So we're going to start with Embody Me, which is a virtual reality social application with a bit of a twist. Now, what they are going to allow you to do is upload a digital picture of your face for your online avatar's face. They're not the first to do this. EA Sports has done this, uh, you know, within the last 20 years on several titles. The ability to upload a picture of yourself. Uh, hell, the Nintendo operating system, really, the Wii allowed you to do a cartoony kind of representation of your face uh, taken with a snapshot. So others have certainly done it, but Embody Me says theirs is very realistic. They've even taken the time to program in some basic synchronization so that your online avatar's lips move when you speak. Now, according to the author from Upload VR, where I got this news from, uh, he said the effect was rather unsettling, and uh, I could see that. Uh, they're going to launch March 25th, so just in under a week from now, into early access on Steam for both Rift and Vive. Next story, Rondo360 uh, is an application for Apple iOS, or rather, yeah, the uh, Apple operating system desktop-wise, that's going to allow you to streamline audio tools for 360-degree videos. Now, I find it odd that they're picking Apple not that I'm against Apple, even though traditionally, I mean, I'm a PC guy and in the IT world, I have no real, you know, hate on for them at all. Uh, I just find it interesting considering most of the VR commercial technology is on the PC side of the equation. Now, they do have a PC version coming, but uh, right now, the Apple version is, is kind of their primary version. The company is called Dysonics behind this and that version is available to download for free it's a free trial once the trial ends it's a 480 us dollar annual subscription that you would pay now speaking of social virtual reality facebook is rec recruiting experts in psychophysics to, as they put it, hack your mind for VR. They being Upload VR, not Facebook. Now, this was a job posting on the Oculus career page. And if you're wondering what the hell epics, what is psychophysics? Glad you asked. Psychophysics is defined as the branch of psychology that deals with the relationships between physical stimuli and resulting sensations and mental states. There you go. Now you know. And the candidate, according to them, will be tackling the scientific challenges that define cutting-edge virtual and augmented reality, addressing heretofore unanswered questions in vision science, displays, and perceptual psychology. Get a load of these requirements, though, guys, just in case you're thinking of throwing your resume into the ring here. You know, you might be cut out for this. You're thinking you have to have this, and this would be a PhD, so a doctorate in vision science, bioengineering, or another related field. You're also expected to have an understanding of human sensory systems and the ability to apply that knowledge to develop predictive computational models of perceptual and behavioral responses, as well as three years experience in the uh, field of psychophysics. How's that cover letter? Still gonna apply? 
And you know what? I joke about that. And there's probably a few of you out there that may actually be qualified or have a doctorate in, you know, an adjoining field. But uh, no, mine would be a bachelor's, definitely not a doctorate. Although full props to those who spend the time to pursue that. No way knocking them. Uh, just saying this isn't for your average person to apply for. Now, now that we know the definition, now that we know why or what they're looking for, why are they doing it? And if you consider that it's Facebook and their bread and butter is social interaction of humans, it all makes sense. That's an area that they want to explore in the sense of how it relates to virtual reality as well. So it makes complete sense within that context why they're looking for a position like this. It's uh, part of that roadmap that they have, this, this plan uh, that Mark has talked about 10 years out. And just what they're planning, they've never really defined that. I mean, they've talked about it in general terms, but it's positions like this that really kind of give you extra hints on what their what their end goal is and um, I think it's going to be amazing five to ten years from now you, people are going to look back and mark my words on this and we're not talking games right now because that would be the first thing I would want to see is amazing games ten five ten years from now but VR as a social thing is going to be huge contrary to all the doom and gloom single player only or single person experience things and i think that's going to be the coolest to basically see all of that unfold and prove that wrong it'd be nice to stand on the sidelines that's for sure Next up, GoPro making significant cuts to its virtual reality efforts and significant cuts essentially meaning ripping VR out of their plans almost entirely. Now, it's no secret uh, based on their last few finan uh, financial reportings, GoPro has not been doing well. You could argue that you know they're the architects of their own demise in the sense that they haven't really uh, innovated. It's the same product with only small incremental updates. And really, they're not the only ones guilty of that. You could apply that to some phone companies, etc. But it has damaged them. And where they did get into virtual reality in, in the sense of 360, they didn't do it in the area that they're famous for, that consumer entry level. Uh, look, they were never high-end. They weren't completely entry level, but they were still more or less affordable. And their $5,000 camera certainly wasn't. Uh, it wasn't something that the average person would be picking up. So what I would have liked to see is rather than just rip out VR entirely, why not refocus and, you know, have a moment of innovation, but maybe start looking at stuff on the lower end as opposed to the thousands of dollars. But uh, these guys have a lot more expertise in uh, that kind of technology than I do. So who am I to say? But uh, it just strikes me curious that they wouldn't have pursued VR the same way they did mobile cameras. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, have I missed a point? Uh, is there more to it, you think, with GoPro? Is it more than just failing to innovate? What else is it? Next story, Disney research showing how VR can be used to study human perception. Now, I certainly didn't intend for this, guys, to be a science-heavy episode. It just worked out that way with the news, but I think it's kind of cool because they do kind of, you know, share a common theme and how dynamic we are as a species in terms of how we're going to also interact with virtual reality. Now, what Disney did here is an experiment, and this video, guys, it's not very long, but it's very cool. There's a guy who's capturing or catching a ball thrown at him, only he's doing it in VR. He's wearing an HMD. They didn't mention which one, and if they did, I missed it, can't really tell what it is. I'm thinking Gear VR, but I'd have to take another closer look. Either way, 
a ball is being tossed. So first, it's just the ball. And he catches it with the same catching motion, you know, uh, humans kind of instinctually kind of go to when they're learning to catch. The next throws, series of throws, are done with the ball with a trajectory arc. So you can predict where the ball is going to be, and it's the same catching motion. Then it's the tra trajectory minus the ball. And then finally, it's just where the ball will end up. No motion animation at all, no trajectories, just a picture of where the ball is going to end up. And that was really cool. And they explain the difference there in mechanics because it wasn't the same catching motion for that last example. So here's what Disney had to say. Catching with the other visualizations did not seem to affect catching behaviors, except in the cases where the virtual ball was not rendered, right? So when it was completely gone, it was just the trajectory. The removal of the virtual ball from the VR scene seems to allow the catcher's hands to reach the catch location much earlier prior to catching. The most apparent explanation for this lies with the observation that the user is forced to alter catching strategy. The catcher has to rely on the target point and trajectory. And so the motor task has changed from a catching task, which had required high brain functions or higher brain functions to estimate their trajectory, to a simpler visually guided pointing task requiring no estimation at all. So that last one wasn't really a catch. It was more of a pointing movement and um, body action. So very cool. That kind of research is exactly what I was talking about earlier. All of that is happening in parallel as VR, this juggernaut that we're all on board for the ride for, is moving forward, steamrolling over everything. Most of us are here for games. But we understand that VR is capable of delivering for more than just gaming. And this type of research is, well, some of it will end up in the gaming sphere, right? There's a lot of AI implications for that type of stuff to, you know, almost push us down paths and not have it be obviously linear, It'll seem like it's our own choice, but really what they're doing is manipulating us through body responses. They know 99 times out of 100, they being the programmers, how we're going to react to a given stimuli, right? So very cool and uh, kind of scary. Not just the privacy implication that we talked about earlier, but the manipulation aspect, right? All right, guys, last story uh, has to do with ray tracking, bringing disruption to the graphics market. This was a uh, article on virtual reality news. And there was a technique back in the early 90s. Wolfenstein used it. Even though there had been real 3D games with 3D programming, Wolfenstein 3D used a technique called ray casting. Not to be confused with what we're talking about here, which is ray tracking, tracing, which is a rendering technique where you basically, when you draw a pixel, you start at the light source. And I'm not a big graphics guy. I know the basics. So if I'm butchering this, feel free to clarify in the comments. But my understanding of it is you have your pixel that you want to draw, you have the source, and you throw rays at the pixel. And the obstacles you encounter along the way determine shadows, uh, reflections, etc. That requires a lot of computational power. If you've ever had a buddy or been that person who used programs like Maya or 3D Studio Max back in the 90s, you'll remember renders that they did or you did that took days, hours to complete. Now that can be done in minutes or seconds, but still not fast enough to be used in games. And yet, if we had that in games, holy smokes, even VR would just take it to all kinds of next levels. 
And that's where this ties in. See, where they talk about VR, they say in VR, ray tracing makes it possible to counter the lens distortion at the very first stage of the rendering process. Instead of moving and stretching pixels at the end of the render, like in current graphic cards, the amount of rays sent per pixel can vary depending on the pixel position in the frame, which means that it is trivial to implement foveated rendering, which tracks the eye and only draws the highest detail images where you are looking and add precision where it matters. Now, that's a lot of technical goopity gop to basically give you the idea that, yeah, some of those lens distortions that we have, like that you can encounter with the Vive, with its, you know, more traditional Fresnel design. You could counter that using this technique. And if you're thinking, well, yeah, but the graphic cards, you know, that we use, they're meant for blasting polygons and pixels, not rays. Very true. But there is a class of graphic cards out there. You don't see them advertised everywhere. They're you know, special order type items, but they are designed to do exactly that. One of those lines is called the Power VR family uh, of GPUs, and it's part of the Wizard family, rather. Uh, Power VR is, is the, the card itself. They are measured in rays per second, as opposed to pixels and polygons. So, for example, the Power VR GR6500 can process. 100 million rays per second, which is huge, but still not fast enough for 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second gaming. But uh, these are all parallel technologies, and I bet there will be some point where they do converge. And the light mapping, which is, you know, similar, but yet another technique that we've talked about in the past, at some future point, there's probably going to be convergence and overlap. And that's where our minds and our eyes, literally, because it's going to be a visual buffet of goodness, uh, of VR goodness, are going to just get absolutely blown away. So that's something you do not want to miss. And hopefully, we're not waiting decades for that. Hopefully, it's just a few years. All right, guys, that is it for the news on this Monday. Uh, back to the couch for me. As always, guys, have a great week. Cheers.